And welcome back to Sports Check on this Monday morning. It is the 22nd day of May 2023. Well, conversations around sports are what we are having today. And uh, we've had the first one about tennis. And now let's talk about basketball because we are in the playoffs of the Kenya uh, Basketball Federa uh, Federation the season finale and we've got from Mac in McQueen County Ambroski so he was joining us via Zoom he's a Secretary General of the Kenya Basketball Federation and uh, a very good morning to you Bonaki Soy and, so and uh, first we apologize for that technical hitch but I think we're now all good to go thank you thank you Wahome I think we are good to go okay. uh, thank you and good morning Kenya welcome to the basketball scene and um, let's now start this conversation with a very, uh, with just first an outlook of how, you know, the regular season went. We'll start with the men, uh, with the women's league. Let's start there. Well, we started our regular season last year around uh, May, and we had uh, quite a bit of interruptions because of the elections. And so we had um, some disruptions because uh, we have institutions that participate in our league. And so the students had to take a break and, and that kind of thing. Again, we had organizations whose budgets were depending on the, on, on the exchequer. And so uh, some delays in disbursement of funds. And so we had a bit of delays and that's why our league has overflown up to this moment when we actually expected to finish uh, by April uh, this year. However, We've had a good uh, regular season, and now we are on the top of uh, basketball, where we have the playoffs and we have reached the semi-final stage at this moment. That's what we are winding up, gearing up for the finals starting this Friday. Well, let's first of all, you know, talk about what we would say are clear developments that have come in when it comes to the sport of basketball. Teams that have stood out for you, uh, we know they are there usual what we'd call the usual suspects you talk about kpa equity but what are some of the teams that you've seen you know come out especially those from outside nairobi uh well we have uh, had teams from outside nairobi that have come up and our league has really expanded and so uh we've uh, seen teams coming out in kakamega in nakuru in uh, Mombasa and uh, in uh, Eldoret. And so it has been, they have been giving the teams from Nairobi a good run for their money. And as you can see, uh, towards the finals, we now have um, such surprises like Zitek who have, who have made it to the finals. And therefore, we are seeing a bit of growth in the, in, in the basketball uh, scenario and changing the terrain the normal terrain that existed uh, uh, there before. So let's now first of all talk about the lower division games because uh, in Division Two we've got NBK. Uh, they are playing Game Five of their division, uh, of the Division Two match today. It will be played in Nakuru. They are playing against Cabals, and um, very oddly named team, a Cabal. No one wants to have such a name. But how's this? How, what's the competition in these lower divisions? It's, it's very tight. As you can see, the cabals from Nakuru are hosting NBK. Uh, with NBK having come from the lower league, the Nairobi League, and therefore they have locked the series at 2-2. And today, this morning, they are squaring out on Game 5 to see who comes in to, to, to meet Stanwyck Bank, uh, who, are, who also gave uh, Kissy Raptors a 3-0 run. And so uh, that lower league is very competitive, uh, just as it is at the upper uh, categories. Stanbeck, um just give us an, I mean, what everyone should be looking at when it comes to men's division two. Well, it will be very, very competitive. I'm telling you, these teams have shown a very good performance in the regular season and the start of the playoffs, that is at the quarters. And so whichever team now comes out of the Cabals and the NBK, then we expect that the, when the game they meet, uh, the stand big bank, then it will be fine. And so it's a very tight game uh, that will be coming up. And therefore we are calling to people to come and watch. You will you'll get surprised the kind of talent that exists at that level. And we are also expecting that this level 
will be the level that will be giving an eye opener to the teams in the Premier League for them to get a few players to promote them and get them in the upper uh, upper level uh, at the Premier League. Now, let's talk about Division 1 before we move to the top tier. And t uh, tomorrow, um, we've got Strathmore playing against Snipers. And this is for the um, men's Division 1, the right to face USIU. How tough is this league? Because this, um, we, you're also looking at people who want to go to the top. And some of these clubs have been at the top and been relegated before. Yes, uh, normally at this level, it is another do or die. Normally the teams at this level play their hearts out, really, because they are really young, we're boys and girls, and therefore we always see a lot of talent and a lot of uh, effort made at this level. Very entertaining and very thrilling. So as you can see, uh, tomorrow evening we will have the Strathmore uh, and the Snipers taking on on Game 5. The last two games have been a thriller at Nyayo, and I can assure you that even tomorrow evening, that will be the same. And so this is a place where uh, teams play, knowing that it borders at the line of going to the Premier League or not going. And therefore, this is a very sensitive category, very, very sensitive. And therefore, everything has to be taken into account to make sure that the the, the platform is fair enough for the teams to qualify or not qualify for the Premier League. So teams take it very seriously because it really it is really a privilege to play at the Premier League level. So we, we are expecting a lot of fireworks into this. Well, and um, let's also, you know, when it comes to the women's, this is a very interesting one because we've got the women is going to be USIU. They're going to be playing against ZTEC Development. So, just tell us about how, you know, these clubs come in with the, their tier two teams for and make a push and give everyone a run for their money. Yes, as you can see, those are two university sites and uh, uh, you, you, the experience that they bring from the KUSA games is really very interesting. And as you can see, uh, ZTEC have a development site uh, with their senior team uh, playing at the Premier League. And again, this is another de uh, development site which acts as a feeder to the main team. But you can see, as respective of being a development site, they have come up to get to the finals of the Division 1. And therefore, uh, this we expect fireworks to bring rivalry from other games which are in the KUSA games. And of course, the university comrade fever that comes with these games will be displayed at, the, at those games. We expect them to ferry a lot of, of fans. You know, students love uh, cheering their teams. And so we expect that the gym will be packed with students cheering from the first second to the last second of the fourth quarter. Now, you mentioned about the KUSA experience. Just ex, um, expound on that because we see a lot, because we've seen, um, for example, even the University of Nairobi terrorists, uh, you know, um, they've got a crazy name um, in today's. Well, in to, going by today's world, but we've seen them and the KU Pirates also, you know, coming up and giving a real push. Yes, uh, Wahome, this country runs a very good elaborate uh, league for the universities, and therefore, uh, alongside our federation league, the universities participate in their in their league. Down there in their league, there is a lot of rivalry, and of course, you know how you feel when you are at campus. Yes. Of course, superiority in many aspects and, and that kind of thing. So this is the fever that comes from down there. Sometimes some universities are champions at the KUSA games, and when they come to the league, they lose. Sometimes they want to defend their names at the league, at the Federation League, and therefore it really carries a lot, and the students take it seriously. And the universities take this one very seriously again. Of course, our league is superior and it has a lot of stakes when it comes to our league. And therefore, the universities really want to enjoy the opportunities that come uh, with our league in terms of international exposure and all that. So, KUSA is a well elaborate uh, league system for the universities and we are happy of the work that they do. And we are uh, also excited by what 
they develop and bring on to board onto where we are and therefore we are ready to push it forward <coughs> from where they reach now let's now move on to the top division uh because we've got the final both kpa teams are there but let's go with the women's team first um kpa they'll be playing against ztec but equity hawks missing out on this is uh knowing very well that they even played uh you know regional basketball um this year what's been the story of this ztec side throughout the season well a big surprise but i tell you young people can always bring uh, anything home any day so uh, when you look at the ztec team they had uh, beefed up uh, the team just on the onset of the second uh, leg and therefore we saw the team rising up and you can always see the energy in the young girls playing uh, their hearts out and of course uh, equity having played even at the regional uh, championship they brought in their experience and they, their skills and all that but somehow it didn't work and and, and the young girls ran over them on a 3-0 series well very very surprising kpa they've got a huge history they have been yes. giving us um best of the i mean the best of the lionesses and also the fact that some of their players have now moved stateside what's this continuous story that they do have this this will be fireworks Wahome. remember one of the top players in kpa has switched to ZTEC. that is madina yes and therefore everybody will be out to see how she handles uh, her former side and also uh we will want to see how kpa will stop her from that we will ex be expecting to see a lot of high skilled basketball in terms of options and skills in trying to bring out options and and the both teams trying to undo what would be the usual thing that everybody would be expecting maybe we don't know how the ZTEC wants to play Medina we don't know what KPI has planned for Medina but again around that the teams could pull a surprise through other players you never know it's going to be really really a good game that everybody would want to see uh, here and a lot of mental work from the coaches side will really be playing a lot in this so are the uh the, just uh, give us a proposed calendar for this five um, game, uh, the best of five series playoff for the women's. Yes, this Friday we take on to the first game of the Division One men at 6 p.m. in uh, in, 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 in Nyayo. and at 8 p.m. we have the first game of the men Premier uh, uh, game, and then then the game two and game one of the ladies will go on on the saturday and game, uh, game two for the women will go on in on sunday so this weekend starting uh friday evening 6 p.m the place to be is nyayo stadium <coughs> all through to sunday evening that is where the deal will be going on and we want to see who comes up fast who blinks fast is what we want to see now the kpa people they really love you know watching their team at makande what's the game three plan huh? is it home in a way or is everything going to be happening in nairobi uh we of course usually we have a home and away uh, series and, and there's that but we are having discussions uh on on the venues and so we will be communicating by the end of the day today on how it goes uh because uh we we want to leave all our clients and our fans satisfied and so we want to meet everybody's expectations and therefore we are on with some discussions and we we'll communicate by the time we are done by the end of the day okay now um you mentioned about the men's final and we've got kpa playing against equity kpa making it to the final that is an, what we would call an everyday story equity what's been their main strength at the moment because there's a story of Ulinzi Warriors because that's what everyone would like to see a final between KPA and Ulinzi. Well, uh, as I told you, it depends on how a team has prepared and surprises have been pulled. Uh, from the semi finals of these uh, men premier, 
there was no team that had been given a clear uh, buy into the finals. And therefore, it was every team to fight uh, for itself. And as you saw, between EPT and Williamsi, it was really every game was to wait and see. The wait and see case until the last whistle. And same with KPA and Thunder. Any team could have been in the in the finals. I watched um, KPA Thunder in, on Saturday in Mombasa, and uh, it was thrilling. It was that kind of game that you wouldn't want to miss. And therefore, this one now has brought about the finals now with a lot of uh, renewed rivalry between KPA and EPT. Who the giant is this year? That will be what will be displayed uh, starting. Uh, this weekend on Friday. Okay. Now, looking at um, that, then let's talk about regional and continental football because we can see, you know, the bas Basketball Africa League, um, the clubs that are uh, going on right now. What's now the next plan for this? You know, for the, for the Kenyan champions. <coughs> uh, once we are done with the finals uh, for, for, for this league, uh, of course, the winners are out, outright partic participants in our club championships within the region. And therefore, we expect that the teams that make it uh, through here will end up at the continental uh, level once they are done with the qualifiers that is on pile. Uh, we, we, the main side will also have an advantage in that uh, they, the, the winners will definitely participate in the qualifiers for the Basketball Africa League that is involved. And therefore, we expect that uh, quite a bit of preparations will need to be done for us to make a mark at the ball uh, scene uh, or at the ball level, because that is where again basketball has shifted to uh, into this continent uh, alongside other uh, other club championships that will take place. Now, <clears throat> the other one is now also ma making uh, talking about the teams that get relegated and those that get promoted. Just um, especially for the Premier League and Division One. Just tell us that story about that movement there. Uh, once we are done with our classification games, uh, all through the last two teams in every category will be relegated, and the top two definitely will now get uh, promoted to the next uh, level. Uh, that will be very clear as now we end up uh, by Friday or by the end of this weekend. We will be done with our classification games and therefore the teams that um, get relegated will be aware by monday on on the way forward and they will know where they stand now the other one is working towards development we um because everyone's now talking about infrastructure maybe you could start off by mentioning to us um what every um what would be required you know out there for the right surface so that players get used to it, uh, uh, get used to playing on the correct surface at all times? Uh, well, we have uh, a, bit of, a, a bit of people with technical know-how within the Federation. And therefore, every time an organization or an individual wants to construct a court, we always uh, appeal that they'll be able to get in touch with us to <coughs> advise them. Uh, basketball is an indoor game, but it is unfortunate that uh, in this continent we cannot afford much of indoor games. But we have quite a bit of them, try, people trying to come up with indoor structures. And therefore, we are asking that anyone who wants to construct a court, please get in touch with us and make sure that uh, we give you the right people to advise you on what surface to put, depending on where you are located. Okay. Well, the other one is when it comes to the national teams, the Morans and also the basketball lionesses. We know what the buzz of the Morans, you know, going all the way up and playing at uh, the Continental Championships. It was a one, one, I mean, it, it took, what, 28 years for them to get to that level. What's being done so that it, that buzz that was created does stay on? Yes, we have quite a of activities lined up uh, for, for, for the national teams. Uh, this next month in June, we have the under-16 team that is expected to participate in Rwanda. 
uh, both boys and girls. And then our senior team men will be doing the African in July. And as we get towards August, our lionesses will also be going for Afro basket qualifiers. Uh, remember that uh, we have we are already we have already bounced back into the uh, continental level, and we are claiming back our spot within the continental level. And what we need now is to come up with a very good uh, preparation plan and make sure that our teams have all what it takes. And to make it to that level, because we want them all the way now to start debate uh, the discussion on World Cup uh, qualifiers. Just, uh, just tell us about African, because <clears throat> that is uh, b basically tier two African basketball championships, and how we, you know Kenya can reclaim its place back at the Afro Chan. Yes, remember last time we were runners up in the African and that gave us a, a, a buy to play at the continental level. So the rest that are qualifying for the continental level are playing uh, this month uh, in, in, in uh, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Once they are done, then we join them in July uh, for the continental championship. And therefore, our preparation will really be key for us to really make a mark uh, at the continental level, given that we have not gone through the qualifiers uh, at the zonal level. So it is really calling for us to make sure that we are well, well packaged uh, for that continental level. All right. Thank you very much, Ambrose Kisoy, who is the Secretary General of the Ke uh, Kenya Basketball Federation. And he was speaking to us on Zoom from his base in Makueni County. He also serves as the director of sport for Makueni County. Asante Sana SG for your time this morning. Thank you. See you on Friday evening. Don't miss. <laughs> okay. I will make sure that I can at least come for the 8 o'clock game because that would be yes. a, a very huge one for me. Thank you very much. And that is Ambrus Kisoy. And remember that we are getting to the, for the final stages of the Kenya Basketball Federation. We are into the finals. KPA versus Equity in the men's final. The women's final is going to be KPA versus Z Tech. So all at the National Stadium games one and two happening there.